most of the events important in shaping the course of my life happened before I was born. They happened in 1917, 1921, 1939, and 1941. I was born in Poland in 1945, six months after the end of World War II. The same events were instrumental in altering completely the social fabric of the place that my family on both sides had lived for centuries. The place was called Volinia. It had been a part of the Polish Empire since the 14th century. The name was kept when Volinia became part of Tsarist Russia during the reign of Catherine the Great. After the Soviet Revolution and the Polish-Russian-Ukrainian Civil Wars, in 1921, Volinia was divided in two. The western half became a part of Poland, and the eastern half became part of the Soviet Union. Ukrainians have always lived in Volinia, but until quite recently, its character was that of an ethnically mixed borderland and a perennially contested battleground among the Central and Eastern European powers. Jews have lived in Volinia for at least 800 years. Before the cataclysms of the 20th century, the majority of the population in the towns and villages of Volinia was Jewish. Most of the others were ethnic Ukrainians, Poles, Russians, Germans, Tatars, and Gypsies. Today, the area that was historically Volinia is in the Ukrainian heartland and Volinian Jews are largely absent, much like a species that has been driven out of one of its natural habitats. Elderly Ukrainians remember their Jews and some even acknowledge their memories. Most younger ones do not know that the Jews were once the majority of the local townsfolk, even some who are themselves of Jewish ancestry. I am a child of Volinian Jews. My parents' mother tongue was Yiddish. I was always a little unclear as to whether their second language was Russian or Polish, because they spoke both. It all makes sense once you know the history of the place. I have always lived comfortably with ghosts and shadows, events, places, and people that should be over and done with, but simply are not. When I was 60, lacking any relevant experience, but buoyed by the acquired knowledge that shame is a useless emotion, I decided to make a movie about Volinia. The end of the Soviet occupation and the incorporation of Volinia into the newly independent nation of Ukraine made an unguided film shoot possible, if still not so comfortable. I had the notion that making a film would demonstrate a serious commitment to my ghosts. I wanted to renew my intimacy with them, to breathe their air, to walk in their streets and footpaths, and to sit by their rivers, and to say Kaddish in the right places. And most of all, I wanted to make my ghosts and shadows matter. Novograd Volinsk, also known as Zvil, was the town where my father Yosif was born in 1906. Rovno was the town where my mother Tanya was born in 1912. The towns are about 60 kilometers apart in what today are two different Ukrainian administrative units. Neither town is featured in the English guidebooks. Generally, you have to do a web search or a look in the index of a history book for any mention of them. The inhabitants of these towns often found themselves placed in or displaced from the killing fields that the great powers had made at every turn in their flat, indefensible borderland. It was, however, the catastrophes of the 20th century, the wars, revolutions, the Holocaust, and deportations that permanently turned a multi-ethnic milieu into today's Ukrainian heartland. Ukrainians have taken pains to revive their language and their culture and their singular form of Catholicism. 
They have rewritten their history from a new perspective, celebrating a Cossack warrior or a poet who actually wrote in Ukrainian. What was this place like before the Jews were driven out? What was the impact of their demise on the Ukrainians who live here today? What do people in each group really know about their intertwined past? And what about the handful of Jews who are still here? Are they simply scraps on the cutting room floor of time? Would answering these questions put me closer to my ghosts? On a whim, I went a long distance to find out.